Hello and welcome everybody to this Vital PBX webinar. Well, you know already that this is a new recording that we made uh, concerning the webinar, but today here we're going to be talking about Vital PBX 4.0, the new version of Vital PBX, which has been released since February 1st and uh, you can now use in production environments. Today we're going to be going through a presentation where we are going to be showing the different uh, uh, highlights uh, of different features that uh, we have for this uh, new version of Bottle PBX. I will not be going through every single thing that is new, but I will go through the more more interesting parts of uh, the new version of Bottle PBX. So we are going to be able to see that. Uh, if not, I'm going to stay here all day and I do not want to take all of your time. So uh, we will begin. So here we have um, our first slide first, in case you do not know me. Let me talk a little bit about myself. So I'm channel manager. I'm Joseph Montes, channel manager for Vital PBX. And um, I've been working with Vital PBX for quite a while and it's a pleasure for me to be able to show you the new version of Vital PBX. Uh, you might know me as the guy that always answers your emails. Um, so there I am. Hey. So let's uh, get straight to the point. Uh, what is the difference inside of Vital PBX 4? What is, what is new with Vital PBX? So, the first and biggest thing that Vital PBX4 has is a full backend uh, overhaul. So we did a redo of uh, the full backend. Um, we 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 made a couple of changes concerning what the backend has. But first, let's understand uh, what we had with Vital PBX version three. So with the uh, with version three, we had uh, CentOS seven, sixty four bit as our base operating system. Then uh, it was AMD 64 only, so it will only work with this type of architecture. You would not be able to use this uh, with uh, other types of CPU architectures. We are, uh, on the latest version, we were using version uh, 7.2 for PHP. It was uh, mostly a SIP environment as we still support SIP and uh, you're able to use SIP as, uh, as a primary um, technology. And the latest version of asterisk we got with Vital PBX3 is asterisk 18.12. Now, with uh, Vital PBX version 4, we're built upon Debian 11. We're going to go over why we made this shift from CentOS to Debian in just one slide, but if you're in the tech world, you might already know why we make this shift. The, with uh, the addition of Debian, uh, we are now able to have full ARM support so we're going to be supporting this type of architecture as well as AMD64, as you can install Debian in any one of those architectures. And we have make sure that um, all of the repositories work um, depending on the sort of architecture that you're using. Then uh, we're, we have moved every single application, including the core Vital PBX um, application for the, for the web UI, uh, as well as all of our Sonata Suite and VITC, uh, WebRTC, all of them have been moved to PHP 8.1, so we can have the latest security updates uh, for your, the PHP code and make sure that everything is up and running at the safest way possible. And we have also moved into a full PJSIP uh, environment. So no longer we support SIP. We do support SIP, as I will speak uh, about in just one moment. But um, PJSIP is the new main technology uh, that we're going to do every single new trunk, every single new extension is going to be PJSIP. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you exactly um, uh, how this is going to work in your environment and that nothing is going to change that drastically. And um, so you can have a smooth transition from version three to version four of Vital PBX. Next, uh, we're using the latest version of asterisk 18, which is asterisk 18.16. And I can assure you that we have 90% faster apply changes. So whenever you click those two little red arrows at the, at the top, uh, making a circle, you, when you click on them to apply all, all of the changes that you have sa saved, um, we, I can assure you that we are 90% uh, faster with various of those apply changes. And it's incredible how um, the optimization was done for, for the back end to be able to do that. So let's talk about the first thing. First, uh, why did we change 
from CentOS to Debian. Well, it's basically the end of CentOS. CentOS 7 has an end of life for 2024, where it's, I, I believe it's around June or July, that uh, CentOS uh, will no longer receive any sort of support. And uh, it's basically the it's end of life. It's, it's EOL no longer being uh, supported. So we were seeing what were our options were uh, upon moving. Uh, I, I, are we going to be moving to another uh, distribution based on CentOS? What are we going to do? And after many months of spe uh, speaking about um, or talk talking about uh, this situation, we decided to move over to Debian as it is well supported and um, it has uh, a lot of accept acceptance uh, within the Linux community. And uh, we believe that it is a very strong um, operating system or distribution to be able to hold a vital PBX. And uh, CentOS 8 was the other option, and it's, it was basically DOA, dead on arrival. Uh, it didn't have effective support, it didn't have that much acceptance, and it basically, they basically ended support for it almost immediately after they announced its release, uh, since they said that that was their final release. So um, it, didn't, it didn't get good acceptance, so uh, it was basically dead on arrival. So uh, with this in mind, we decided to shift over to Debian uh, for a very robust and well-supported platform to build Vital PBX upon. Next, we have PJSIP. PJSIP is basically the evolution of, B of SIP as we know it. And uh, the reason that we're moving from SIP to PJSIP, it's uh, basically deprecated. So Chan SIP, as we know it, uh, is deprecated uh, from asterisk ever since version 17. Uh, so it has not gotten any updates. It has not get, gotten any support since version 17. It's, it was just an optional technology that you could activate uh, during asterisk-based asterisk installations. So we decided to activate it on version 3, so you can still have it there. It's, and you could see that uh, SIB was still the secondary technology, uh, but you're uh, more than welcome to change it to the primary if you wanted to, if you really wanted to. Uh, but um, it is deprecated, no longer supported, no new features are coming to it, uh, and no fixes are coming to it if there's, there are any issues. So, and uh, also Chan SIP will, not longer, will no longer be available uh, from asterisk 21, since asterisk 21 and onward. So we no longer have that option if we decide to continue going with the latest versions of asterisk. Uh, so we really need to move forward and make the leap and change our environments from SIP environments to PJ SIP environments. By changing the uh, main technology from SIP to PJ SIP, let's talk about some advantages from uh, PJ SIP and why we are benefiting by moving to this uh, new te uh, new te newer technology. I cannot say it's new because it has been out for a while, so it's very mature technology, but uh, it's newer technology. So first of all, it's supported by asterisk. So new features and, and new improvements and fixes are being constantly developed uh, based on the, upon, upon this technology. It allows for easy IP authentication for all of your trunking. So you can easily create your IP authenticated trunks using PJSIP. It allows for multiple accounts for one single extension. So uh, this, uh, by just changing one header, which is called uh, the contacts, you can raise the number of contacts a user could have, and you can register that many, uh, that many devices to, um, to that specific user. So you can have multiple devices for one single uh, username and password for, a, for an extension registration. So it, it allows you to do a, a lot with uh, just one account. Then it has an intuitive uh, NAT environment, so it is very easy to configure the NATing for, for PJSIP trunking and, and PJSIP connectivity. So where, where you put your public IP address and your local IP address, and uh, you can easily configure that uh, with PJSIP. It has WebRTC support. This is why it's, it was very important with version 3 when we introduced Vitsi, uh, which is our WebRTC client, to have um, efficient WebRTC, WebRTC support. And the only one that could give us, give us that was PJSIP. So that's why for any new Vitsi client that you create, it needs to be uh, PJ SIP. It cannot be uh, a SIP based device. So it, uh, PJ SIP gives us that WebRTC support where with SIP is not very stable. It's, it's not 
um, quite supported and documentation can be a little bit finicky as most of the work is workarounds and we do not, did not want any workarounds uh, for something uh, stable or in production. And the best news of all is that all your SIP devices will work with PJ SIP. So there's no need to worry that your SIP devices, your desktop phones, your soft phones, your uh, applications will stop working with uh, PJ SIP. Uh, just because you, they use SIP instead of PJ SIP, there's no need to worry. You cannot have uh, PJ SIP without SIP. It's part of the name. So PJ SIP has um, a SIP technology built into it. So every single SIP based device will work with PJ SIP. So you can go ahead and start using uh, PJ SIP uh, with SIP devices. So you can connect your desktop phones, you can connect with your VoIP providers uh, where they provide you uh, SIP trunks. That you can connect a SIP trunk perfectly with a PJ SIP trunk and uh, the configuration could not be easier. You can start seeing a lot of uh, those articles directly on our blog. And um, we, we, uh, we will continue to have th that sort of information so you are able to um, see how really easy it is to configure these PJ SIP uh, trunking. So with this, we can have a very uh, clear idea that PJ SIP is here and uh, we need to uh, move forward and start turning into, into that ship. So now let's talk about new features concerning uh, Biotel PBX. These are just highlights that I would like to show you. Uh, so um, these are not every single new feature that, that we have added. You can go to our change log uh, at our website to be able to see uh, the exact um, list of different uh, changes that we have made. Uh, but these are some highlights that I would like to, I would like to present and uh, not take too much of your time uh, today. So uh, to continue doing this, let's go to a Vital PBX uh, 4 machine. And as you can see, we now have this very beautiful background, uh, a new redesign of the login screen. And uh, we're able to, we're able to uh, use this, uh, use this as, as, a, as a first uh, uh, attraction with uh, Vital PBX 4 and we are able to log in. And then I click log in and there you have it. That's uh, one of the first highlights I wanted to show you. And um, as you can see, we now support two-factor verification or two-factor authentication for uh, uh, Vital PBX. So you're able to use a Google Authenticator application to um, synchronize with, uh, with your user and be able to uh, provide a two-factor uh, authentication code. Let me open up my uh, Google Authenticator app here. And since I'm using Apple devices, I am able to copy and paste uh, directly, directly from my cell phone. And as you can see, we are now logged into Vital PBX4. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you so you can see it a little bit clearer. And now we can take a look into the new dashboard for Vital PBX. So you can see it's a, it's a very similar, very familiar for, for everyone that has been using Vital PBX for a little while. Uh, we now uh, have moved the disk usage to this bottom part. Uh, we now have network information so we can see our host name and our IP address. And don't worry, for all those hackers, this server will be long gone when you see this video. And um, here you also have your system information. You can see that we're running on Debian. It should be right above me right now. Uh, you should see uh, that, that we're running on Debian and um, you can see uh, additional information. You can check your PHP version. Sorry that I'm covering the PHP version I'm using right now. And um, you can see your Vital PBX version. So it's a little bit more complete. Uh, you can see your call traffic here in, in, in graph bar since this is a demo server. Uh, there's no information there, but uh, here you can see that your outgoing and coming internal and transit calls. Uh, as well here as your CPU memory and swap as you had with version 3, now just with a, uh, a new color swap that makes it a little bit more modern. And uh, overall, the, the interface has been overhauled a bit um, with, uh, with uh, a little bit more, more uh, modern design. Uh, and speaking about design, you, you saw at the beginning that when I logged in, we had that beautiful background image. But wouldn't it be great if you could make uh, that your own. So with uh, the new, uh, with Vital PBX4 uh, and uh, the update for the branding module, we now have that ability inside of the branding module itself. 
so we can go ahead and um, change that background image. So we just select that background image here. We upload it. Here you can see that we now have this beautiful valley sunset or sunrise. And um, we now have the ability to save this. And uh, the changes have been saved. So uh, you can also disable that background image if you so like. So you can change this uh, here as well if you do not want to have a background image, just a solid, solid color. Um, you, you can have that as well. So if we were to log out, you can see that we now have that beautiful background. Maybe you can select one that is a little bit, <laughs> a little bit darker in the middle so we can see the, the username and password fields a little bit better. But uh, this, will, this uh, will allow you to have the, your own personalized backgrounds. You can have a company branding uh, background on, on the login screen and so on and so forth. And uh, the new branding module update for version four will allow you to do that. So now if we log back in, we are now able to, um, to change that. Okay, so uh, next up, uh, speaking of add-ons such as the branding, now if we come to the add-ons uh, menu or module, here you can see um, that we have a, new, a couple of new actions here. Uh, well, a new action here inside of the add-ons, which is the ability to reinstall an add-on. So if you're having issues or you, if you want to reset your add-on, you can simply click on uh, reinstall and then click on reinstall once again and this will reinstall the add-on for you. I'm not gonna do it uh, just for the uh, sake of this uh, tutorial to stay, uh, or well, this webinar to stay a little bit uh, shorter, but um, you're, able to, you're, you're able to reinstall your add-ons directly from the um, add-ons module. Then the next highlight uh, is uh, concerning your network security. So if we come to, into a firewall, you can see that our menus have shifted a little bit uh, just to make it a little bit uh, more precise or more uh, meaningful, uh, which what are the submenus were and what they do. Uh, if we come to admin firewall and access control, uh, we na here now we have the, what we had before, the, the whitelisting IP addresses is now located here. And uh, not only can you whitelist an IP address or an IP address block so, or, or, or segment, network segment, uh, you can also blacklist IP addresses. So you, as you can see, this is a cloud uh, installation and the failed ban and, or the intrusion detection is uh, working real hard. Uh, but I can come here and start uh, banning uh, an IP address um, directly. Uh, I can even do slash and, and ban a whole uh, network segment. So this will allow you this will allow you to start banning known IP addresses that you do not want them to uh, access your server in any way, either uh, phone registration or administration of the system. You can ban complete IP addresses uh, directly from the um, from the uh, user interface. Now, we have talked about new, some new features. So we have talked about uh, two-factor authentication. We have taught about more, rebra more branding customization, uh, reinstalling add-ons, and whitelisting and blacklisting IP addresses. Now, those are not the only highlights that I would like to go through today. Um, the next one I'd like to talk a little bit about is the hotel management, um, the hotel management add-on. So if we come into our PBX once again, we will now uh, we now have this hotel management module that we can install inside of Vital PBX. Um, this module um, will allow you to create your different um, uh, room status codes, so you can uh, so you can have your um, your team that uh, that is cleaning the room uh, be able to tell the 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 system the PMS systems uh, what status that does uh, the room have. Uh, you can also um, manage your minibar items, so you can uh, manage inventory for your minibar, minibar, and then uh, your general settings uh, such as uh, wake up calls and uh, show langu language on screen. So, so your users will be able to, your concierge will be able to uh, see the language on their screen, and uh, you can manage the class of service um, from here as well. 
So this hotel management uh, module uh, has been done uh, alongside the people at Char. This is Char uh, using their PMS link application as a gateway to over 150 um, PMS applications. So using uh, their software, connecting it uh, with uh, Vital PBX through this module, you will be able to access over 150 PMS uh, applications that you might encounter on your uh, endeavors working in the hotel industry. And you will be able to, to, to have Vital PBX be that uh, front for the PBX uh, side of things. And um, you can create your codes within Vital PBX. Once again, this is using Char PMS Link. Um, so you can check out their website for more information about um, this system. Keep in mind that uh, our hotel management system is uh, licensed by the enterprise licensing plan. So it's, uh, it's not working for multi-tenant environments. It is just for dedicated servers only uh, at the moment. So you will need to have that enterprise uh, licensing plan uh, to make use full use of the hotel management uh, module. Now, uh, this is a one big add-on that has been added to Vital PBX that allows you to have a whole new industry um, at your hands so you can manage hotels now uh, with uh, Vital PBX. Uh, but then another big, another big add-on module that was asked for um, for Vital PBX, and we are glad that we have worked it, uh, around and making it uh, with uh, uh, with the team is SMS. So SMS is finally coming uh, to, to Vital PBX and it is now available with Vital PBX 4. And uh, let's take a look into it. So SMS, you might have taken a glimpse of it uh, right here on, on this system. Uh, it is its own module. We are able to connect with um, four providers at this moment, which is Telnix, Twilio, QuestBlue, and SkyTel. And um, we have many more providers of your choosing to come into this system. So rest assured that this list is not definitive. It's going to continue to grow and we're going to continue uh, improving the SMS capabilities for uh, Vital PBX. So we are able to have um, the connection with these providers. So whenever you create that connection, for example, here I have a Telnix SMS connection, um, you will uh, have an API key uh, created uh, as well. Uh, you, you will need to paste uh, the API key in the case of Telnix, and um, you will also have a webhook created. So with this webhook, what it allows you to do is not only, not only you're able to send SMS messages, with this webhook URL, you are able to also receive uh, SMS messages and also receive status codes. Uh, down here is where you have your SMS numbers. Since uh, usually your VoIP providers will not allow you to use uh, any uh, number to send uh, SMS messages uh, to prevent any sort of fraud or any sort of um, scamming. Um, you will only be able to use uh, phone numbers that you have purchased uh, with that provider. And um, you can add numbers uh, individually, so you can use a number and a description or you can get numbers from API. So if I just go ahead and I'm just going to delete a couple of phone numbers here. Okay, so I just deleted them, but I can get numbers from API, click continue, and you can see we now have those links, uh, those phone numbers uh, back there again, and all of them have been done using this API key. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how we connected with our provider. Now, what can we do now uh, with this uh, system? We, for example, here we can go ahead and start testing, uh, sending an, uh, uh, an SMS directly from Vital PBX. So uh, let me go ahead and send a text message uh, to myself. Uh, so I'm going to uh, send, a, send a message. So hello from Vital PBX. This is you from a vital PBX system. Let's let's do that, and then I'm going to send uh, send it to my phone number. I'm going to ask our editor to to blur uh, all of these phone numbers um, just for uh, privacy's sake. 
but we need to have working numbers to be able to uh, send and receive messages. Now, take a look at how I've, I have written that phone number. As you can see, I get an error here, and this error is intentional. Uh, as uh, you can see, we need to provide a certain format uh, depending on the provider. So in the case of Telnix, we need to provide it on an E164 format, uh, which uh, gives us a plus one since Telnix allows us to send uh, SMS messages to uh, international numbers. So we need to add that plus one uh, for US numbers. So I'm going to click on Send now. And there you see my message has been queued for sending. And if I come to my device, uh, that SMS message, unfortunately, I'm right as of this moment, I'm not screen sharing my, uh, my device, but uh, you will be able to uh, see my reply back. So I'm just going to reply back uh, with, uh, that's so cool. There you go. So I have sent that uh, SMS message uh, to my Vital PBX. And where do I see all of these messages that are being sent and received? Uh, we see it here on messaging logs. Uh, so you can see here that I have this uh, hello from Vital PBX. This is you from my PBX, uh, Vital PBX system. And sometimes our SMS messages can be a little bit uh, long, so you can always click on them and you will be able to see a full uh, version of that uh, SMS message. If I refresh there just uh, just uh, just a bit, it was taking a little bit of time to receive the the SMS message, but you can see here that I have received the that's so cool uh, from my phone number. So you can see here the received status, delivered status. Uh, all of this is uh, thanks to that webhook that was created within the module, uh, so we we can receive those uh, status events as well as the incoming uh, the incoming SMS messages. So another great thing that we can do with SMS messaging as of this moment is uh, messaging notifications. So what message noti messaging notifications allows us to do is it gives us the ability of creating a destination that is an SMS message. So here I have two examples. The first one is uh, using it um, sort of as, an, as a notification for, a, for our customers uh, concerning our support schedule. So whenever somebody gets into this destination, it can be either through a direct phone number or, for example, the most common one would be an IVR. So you can have an option that says, press 3 to receive an SMS message with our support schedule. So people will dial 3 and they will get to this destination. And uh, depending on the caller ID uh, we receive, so since, as you can see, this 2 is blank, so the recipient will be the caller ID of the person that's calling us. So that caller ID must support uh, receiving uh, SMS messages. Um, whenever they get here, uh, we're going to try and send that SMS message with this predefined message. And then we can take them to any destination. Another example that I have here is uh, after an after hours uh, notification. So here you can see that we have um, a predefined message here. And we do have two recipients uh, statically uh, assigned here. So I have made this in a way that, for example, we, have, we can have some time conditions inside of this uh, uh, Vital PBX um, installation. So uh, we can say that after, on the after hours, uh, take them to this destination. And uh, whenever somebody calls, uh, we're going to send this predefined message to these two phone numbers. So they can get a notification whenever somebody called us after hours. Once again, all of this is just an example of what you can do. And then uh, we're going to take the caller to a voicemail uh, direct for this extension. So this way, they, uh, the, our staff will not only receive a notification, the caller can leave us a voicemail message. So as you can see, these are just two examples of what you can do with mess the messaging notifications uh, module. So you will be able to use this inside of your day-to-day -day workflow. Now, not only does this uh, SMS module brings us uh, these uh, features right now, we're going to pl be planning on adding this to even more applications now that we have the connection. So uh, be expectant of Vitsi and uh, other 
uh, applications inside of Bottle PBX that will make use of this, these SMS capabilities that we're adding to Vital PBX. The other good thing about this new module is that we now have an updated API for Vital PBX. A new, a new, the, our new API documentation. So this is for Vital PBX4. And we now have these new endpoints inside of the, inside of the API documentation, which will allow you to see the phone numbers that we have available, uh, the ability to send an SMS message through a, an available phone number. And uh, we can also check the IDs for the messages so we can list all of the different messages that have been sent inside of Vital PBX. So this is, uh, this is the new documentation. I'll, I will make sure that this is also on the description below uh, alongside with various links that, uh, of everything that we're talking about today. So you can easily access everything inside of uh, the system. So um, that would be SMS inside of Vital PBX. And uh, SMS uh, hotel management, two big ones. Uh, let's get uh, a little big a a as well with um, another request that we have had uh, was improving the communications for mobile devices. So we now have this uh, new application for iOS and Android called Vital PBX Connect made only for Vital PBX 4. So this is our new mobile client for Vital PBX. Uh, let me go ahead and jump into a demo and uh, um, we will be able to see Vital PBX Connect going into action. Okay, so I am now uh, recording my the screen on my phone, so you would be able to you will be able to see what I see with uh, uh, concerning the Vital PBX Connect application. Um, so here you can see that we have the Vital PBX Connect application installed. In this uh, example, I'm going to be using an iPhone uh, for this uh, for this specific demo. And now we will go ahead and open the the uh, application, and as you will see in uh, just a moment. Uh, the first thing that we are shown with uh, is our username and password login or be able to scan a QR code. Uh, the easiest way to use uh, the, this uh, application will be by scanning a QR code that we create within uh, Vital PBX itself. I'm not going to go uh, very in depth on uh, the configuration of everything. It, this will have its own video respectively and we also have a blog article that explains everything which is also linked uh, down below. So. Um, the, we, we now ha already have a QR code generated on our computer. Uh, you will be able to see it here. So uh, this is a device that uh, is vi that uh, is a Vital PBX Connect device. We find the Vital PBX Connect uh, application already uh, module uh, already installed on this system, and we and we came over to the devices uh, menu. You uh, under settings, you're able to. Uh, set up the domains uh, where the provisioning is going to, um, where the uh, your server is located, so your registration server and such. Uh, so here I have this device. Uh, I'm going to click here to see a QR code, and now on inside of my device, I'm going to I'm going to go back back to it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the QR code button, point it to my screen there, and as you can see. Uh, it is now registering uh, the device. And uh, now we have the device registered. And this is the main screen that we have for, uh, for this device. It is a um, normal keypad here. You're able to add different uh, extensions. So uh, as favorites for, uh, for a quick dial. So let's say this one is BOSS and the extension is 201. We can enable the BLF. So we can have that. So now we have uh, BOSS uh, already as installed and, uh, well, configured inside of our quick dial so we can have it as VLF. Obviously, right now, I'm the only one uh, using this demo server. So uh, BOSS is currently off call. It's not, it is not in a, in a call at the moment. You can also see your call history. So you can see all of the calls that you have made and uh, all of your missed calls and uh, even recorded calls since you can record locally inside of this device as well. Then we have the, the keypad, uh, which is our main screen here. You can check your voicemail and you can uh, place calls uh, and start them to make it uh, audio or video calls. If you tap on the upper right hand corner, uh, sorry, on the upper left hand corner, we have uh, our name. Here you can see some voicemail information as well as the do not disturb feature. 
If we turn that on, you can see a DND tag tag uh, on top of our name. And uh, there you have it even on the main screen. I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, and then on the upper right hand corner, we have three dots. Uh, these three dots will represent uh, the uh, settings for the application. So here we have uh, various settings. I'm not going to go over everything uh, at the moment, just to not take even more of your time. This is almost an hour long uh, recording. So um, I don't want to make it even more boring than you might be on at this moment. So uh, the most interesting feature that we have at this moment with this uh, settings uh, would be the phone book. So the phone book, as you might already know, we have a phone book um, module uh, inside of Vital PVX that you can install it as a, a free add-on and you can also expand it uh, by uh, purchasing a starter license with the extended features or having any of our licensing plans. And uh, you are able to create uh, contact lists, either internal or external. And um, if we take a look into a phone book that we have here on the, on the system, if we come back to our If we come back to our system here, we've come to tools, phone books, and then uh, check on phone books. Here you can see that uh, I have um, four uh, contacts here. So if we so if we now come to into the uh, phone books module, uh, you can see that we have uh, this list of contacts here. This is an external phone book, and then at the bottom we have this URL that we can use um, to. Uh, to provision this uh, contact information into our devices. And I'm just going to paste this uh, into my um, application. You can see there that I have now pasted that. And uh, I can go ahead and click on done or tap on done. I'll do that twice. So now uh, I will go to the contacts. And here we have uh, the phone book. And as you can see, the phone book has all of these um, uh, has all of these um, contacts that we have created, as you can see on the screen, that these are the same ones. And um, we can add a new contact. So let's create a, quickly a new contact here. So I'm going to call this one Bruce Banner. Let's see if you know who that is. I'm just going to give them a phone number. So it's 616-5578-932. So, um, Marvelous Entertainment, and uh, click Save. So as you can see, I have added a new contact. And if we come back into our uh, device, if we uh, refresh it, you will see that we now have that new contact added automatically. Uh, it'll also refresh whenever you close and open up the application. And you can safely close the application as this application has a full push server dedicated for um, push notifications, so you are able to receive your calls even if the application is closed. Finally, at the end here, we have a messages uh, page where we can go ahead and send uh, different SIP-based messaging. And this SIP-based messaging can be done with the devices like uh, uh, desktop phones that support it or uh, Bitsy uh, devices uh, that are using our WebRTC client. Uh, or other uh, Vital PBX Connect uh, applications. So we can use this uh, to go ahead and start um, sending a message. So I can go ahead and type my boss there. And now I'm going to go ahead and send them a message. And we do support emojis. So uh, I am able to send back and forth messages from another to, uh, extension on a, or another user inside of this Vital PBX server that will be able to respond uh, to my different messages. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the new Vital PBX Connect. Uh, we can also place a call. I'm just going to play a, a dummy call for you to be able to see this um, phone in and how, how, you would, how it would look like whenever you are uh, placing a call. As you can see there, um, we can uh, go ahead and um, go, go into a keypad for DTMF actions. Uh, we can place the call on hold. We can record the call, uh, transfer it uh, blindly, we'll do a blind transfer. Uh, we can also add to the call so we can create a three-way conference. 
uh, we can do an attended transfer. And then on top, uh, we have the buttons to be able to mute our microphone. Uh, we can set it on speaker. We can enable video. Um, and we can also see our uh, calling information. And if we tap on the eye icon here, we can see a little bit more details about uh, this particular call. Uh, and then down at the bottom, we can go ahead and end the call. So that is the Vital PBX Connect application uh, available for iOS and Android. And uh, you can download it uh, today. Now, we have talked about the Vital PBX Connect application and we have shown you a demo. Uh, it is a very neat and very robust application. And uh, it allows you to have these, um, uh, your, your communications, your phone calls anywhere you are um, directly on your pocket. And it's a very uh, robust and reliable application for your different phone calls. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, the pricing for this application. So with uh, Vital PBX Connect, this is a software as a service um, piece of software application. And uh, you are able to, you, um, you have, um, and you will need to, to purchase a license um, for its usage. So if we come back to our browser here, uh, here you can see how uh, you can purchase the, the, uh, the different licenses. We're going to be sure to post the link uh, directly down below, but this would be located at the store on our website. And here you can see that you can choose between monthly and yearly um, uh, subscriptions. And the Vital PBX uh, Connect application can be purchased in groups of 10 for 12 US dollars. And down here, you can change the number of uh, users that you want to have. And of course, you can even go to your desired number. And uh, the difference between monthly and yearly, with year yearly, you're basically saving two months per user um, whenever you subscribe to it. So, so you would be able, you will be able to purchase the uh, specific a specific number of uh, licenses uh, divided by ten, or so divisible by ten, um, as you can only do ten by ten increments. And then uh, you will receive your license to to be able to uh, manage the that um, that purchase. Now, uh, if you want to upgrade your, your subscription, you can perfectly do it so, through your uh, account at Battle PBX. So if we come here to subscriptions, here you can see that I have a subscription of, um, active on this account. I can go into the account, click on update, and then I am able to update the uh, number of users that I want to have on this license. Once I click on update, you here you can see the proration, uh, the difference between your current uh, uh, plan and the new one uh, that will be applied on the next uh, renewal cycle and the next uh, billing date uh, and afterwards you are, you will continue with your new price and um, once uh, you're happy with this the, non the new number of users that you have click on update subscription this will update your license and you will now be able to create uh, more um, uh, registration more di more vital PBX connect connects uh, connect uh, devices. So you will be able to generate more QR codes that your customers can uh, scan and register their Vital PBX uh, devices. And now, as you saw a little bit uh, earlier while I was showing the, the, the pricing, um, from, that, from um, the release of Vital PBX uh, 4 and February 17th, uh, we're having a sale for the, for the Vital PBX Connect uh, licensing. This is, a, this is a special introductory price for, uh, for this new addition into the Vital PBX family, uh, which is running at 50% off. So you're able to purchase instead of $12 for 10 extensions uh, or 10 Vital PBX Connect uh, devices, uh, you're able to have, um, uh, have it for $6 instead of 12 so take advantage of this uh, sp special offer, this introductory price, so you will be able to um, uh, have this new feature at a very, very affordable price. So now uh, we have talked about highlights, new features. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about changes uh, that are occurring with Vital PBX uh, version 4 and onward. 
So there's going to be a changes uh, in uh, in our planning uh, in, in our in our plans. We're trying to simplify um, how they are and how they work, and this has been in effect uh, for a little while now. So, but uh, but first, let let's start with uh, something new coming with uh, with version four. Is that uh, the starter license changes from five to ten Vitsi clients? The enterprise license now has 50 Bitsy clients included instead of the 10 that it, it originally had. Uh, this is due to the, there being no more Bitsy subscriptions. Uh, we noticed that people were not interested in having individual Bitsy subscriptions. They would rather have uh, dedicated um, uh, licensing plans, either the enterprise, call center, or, or the carrier plus. And uh, we decided to cut those off to make the, make the offer more simple and um, you, you, you can no longer purchase uh, individual Bitsy licensing plans. Uh, then there is no more carrier licenses. This is replaced with the carrier plus. So there, the, we will no longer be selling the carrier tier. We, have, we haven't been doing that for a little while now. Um, so you, you can only purchase the carrier plus uh, tier. So um, we, we were seeing people rather than purchasing the carrier uh, licensing plan they were going with the Carrier Plus. It was even more popular than the Carrier One. Um, so we decided to ditch the Carrier Licensing Plan and just uh, focus on the Carrier Plus since it's uh, the top of the line and the one that includes uh, most of uh, the different products that we release for Vital PBX. Um, so you will no longer be able to purchase Carrier Licenses. Um, you can continue using your Carrier License. Those are not going to go deactivated or nor will they be upgraded to a Carrier Plus License um, so as long as you continue your subscription uh, without cancellation or interruption, you will be able to continue using your carrier licenses, no problem. Then um, the SMS feature uh, is to be included uh, in every licensing plan, as I mentioned a little while ago. And finally, two vital PBX, two vital PBX Connect licenses are included in every plan. So every single one of our licensing plans uh, will have two Vital PBX Connect uh, devices um, already included with them. So you will be able to uh, test it out and try it out um, to call each other. And uh, uh, if you want more than that, you will need to subscribe to the licensing uh, for the Vital PBX Connect application as I showed you a little bit ago. Next up, what is coming soon? So a new manual, I am personally uh, writing down the new manual for Vital PBX4, uh, will be coming out later this month uh, to our wiki. So that was wiki.vitalpbx.com. We have new blogs. Uh, so the new blogs are, um, um, are going to be showing you how to integrate the SMS feature. We already have a couple of them. Uh, we're going to have some um, provider specific uh, blogs coming in the near future as well. So stay tuned for that uh, within our blog. Uh, we're going to be having a revamped Udemy course. Right now we're still uh, filming uh, all of those videos. Well, I'm still filming all of those uh, videos. Uh, so it's going alongside with our manual. So it's going to be taking a little bit, uh, a little bit longer to, to be able to revamp. But all of our uh, Udemy course is going to be stripped and, be, and have uh, the videos replaced with version 4 of Vital PBX. And uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, we have a new API documentation. So you can check that on the link that you can see on your screen or you can see down in the description. And that was the end of the webinar that, I, uh, that we had back in February 1st, uh, 2023, showing you the new Vital PBX4 uh, version um, of uh, Vital PBX. Uh, so, once again, I apologize uh, for the inconvenience of uploading this a little bit later. I deeply apologize for everybody because I lost the uh, recording for the, for the webinar uh, that we had uh, at the, at, um, on the live event. Uh, so once again, I am sorry if, uh, for you receiving these news a little bit later, but hopefully I was able to speak my heart out with uh, a couple of highlights, some new features, uh, everything to get you excited about this new version of Vital PBX. I hope that you're excited, looking to have fun 
uh, with uh, Vital PBX uh, version 4. Um, now, uh, the biggest question you can see here that I'm stuck, uh, you, you were able to see that I was stuck on the questions page. Uh, the biggest question that we had during the webinar uh, was how do I migrate from version 3 uh, to version 4? Well, the upgrade path um, is a little bit difficult, but simple at the same time. Uh, the difficulty about it is that since version 3 and version 4 have completely different uh, operating systems, uh, you cannot just run a script that will upgrade you from one version to another. Uh, that's simply not how it works. So um, the way that you're able to migrate from one system to another will be doing a backup. So you can use our backup and restore module inside of Vital PBX, and you will be able to restore that backup on a new Vital PBX4 installation. And don't worry if you're using any of our commercial, commercial features, uh, such as uh, our multi-tenant, our branding, and, uh, or the VITC or Sonata, you're able to back all of that out and then restore that to the Vital PBX4 uh, system, that, uh, the, a, new Vital, a new Vital PBX4 installation that you will make. And uh, all of your configurations will go there. And once you apply the license, you will have instant access to everything that you already have. So no, don't worry about losing the configuration. And as you can see throughout this process, you do not lose your first server. So if anything goes wrong, you can always go back and you can always send us an email to sales at vitalpbx.com. And we will be able to direct you with the correct uh, means uh, to be able to perform this uh, migration. Uh, we have already tested it here in the lab. We already have people rolling out and migrating from version 3 to version 4. We haven't have it, uh, had any big issues with uh, migration. So uh, everything is, uh, is uh, looking all right. But I hope that everybody is getting real excited about um, the new version of Vital PBX. So I know I am. I hope that you are. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time.